Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, How to Do the Perfect Phone Up. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by Dealer On. And for anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer On, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the absolute best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the brand new Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that DealerOn is still the only company in the industry that offers a money back lead guarantee program. So does your website company guarantee you a 50% lift in leads or your money back? <laughs> Maybe you should check us out at our gorgeous brand new DealerOn website at DealerOn.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We are so very pleased to have the one and only Elise Kephart as our presenter today. Elise Kephart is the VP of Internet Sales Training at Phone Ninjas, a company focused on helping dealerships improve phone skills. An international sales and marketing phenomenon in the auto industry, Elise is nationally recognized as the YouTube Diva for her persuasive personalized video greetings. Since 2007, she has sold countless vehicles to clients by creating a strong bond with her customers through the power of unique video messages. Among her high volume sales, she has also earned top performing CSI. With her unique approach to videos, her massive phone skills and selling background, Elise has visited dealerships across the country teaching her one of a kind method. Her approach has been praised by the likes of Ziegler, Cardone and Bradley. She's been published in magazines both in the U.S. and Canada. Elise has presented at seminars including Ziegler's IBP, Driving Sales Executive Summit, and Digital Dealer. And she can be reached at EliseKephartExperience at gmail.com. Now during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond to you by email later today. Also don't forget, a link to download a copy of the webinar recording is also going to be emailed to you later today for your reference, and you had better share it with your friends and colleagues. Oh, and guess what? Our good friend, Elise Kephart, she's going to be giving away some awesome prizes today. On the webinar, one of you lucky webinar attendees is going to be winning a really wonderful bottle of wine from Sausalito Canyon. River Gold is what it's called, and it is amazing, and I wish I could win that. But this is also going to go perfectly with somebody else winning $100 for doing a perfect phone up. That's right. She's going to be giving away all this kind of stuff today. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it, though, so you better stay tuned. You could be one of those people walking away with one of these awesome prizes today. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. Please fill it out because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience. Today, we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all those completed surveys to also win some Google prizes. And hey, do you tweet much? You know what? We hope you do. We'd love to see all the awesome things you have to say about today's presentation. So please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Elise at the YouTube Diva. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. So let's get started. Let's learn how to do the perfect phone up. Elise Kephart, I love when you come to my show. How the heck are you, girl? Oh, I am doing good. It's been it's been a stressful week, you know, cars getting <laughs> stolen and all that all that fun stuff. But um I'm really excited to be here. Thank you again for having me. It's always a, I always have a great time. So, um, so let's go ahead and get started. So, we're going to be talking today about how to do the perfect phone up, and what we're going to be talking about is 2015, the impact that we have with click to call features when it comes to um, customers calling dealerships or even just calling businesses in general. We're going to learn about why customers call us, why customers call your store. Uh, we're actually going to be breaking off and doing some live uh, mystery shops. So <clears throat> Ellie and I, Eliana and I had some fun earlier this week doing rehearsals, and I got this little magic speaker box to uh, to make sure that when we do our mystery shops, you guys can hear it. So we're going to do live mystery shops, and I'm actually going to give away $100 on a customized Visa card uh, if the uh, one of the phone ups that we do is is absolutely perfect. So we'll go over that up, right. <laughs> in depth a, a little bit later. Um, but we're going to learn from that. We're going to you know see the results of those mystery shops that we do, and 
we're going to learn the importance of why a consistent process is important, and then what the magic fix is, what the magic fix is to improving your phone skills. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so when we talk, when I talk about click to call, you know, I, uh, <clears throat> for some of you guys that know my history, I got in the car business in um, not too long ago. I mean, 2007 is when I started, and I really reflect back on, you know, how how we've evolved even since then. 2007, I can remember being on the front line, and it was before we had uh, before we had smartphones. It was still the, you know, the, the kind of the flip phones with the keyboard. Internet really wasn't available uh, on phones. It was it was kind of just a a little you know, text like texting device essentially. Um, and if, if a customer at that time wanted to uh, look at inventory, they had access to, of course, a computer. And they would go on a computer, look at a dealer, look up a dealership, and uh, from there, if they had a question, they would see the phone number on their computer. But then they would have to write the phone number down or text it to themselves and 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 call from their phone. There was no click to call feature. And so the moral of the story is now majority of us are utilizing our smartphone devices, uh, even if it's cracked, which I just dropped my, my phone yesterday. Um, but the majority of us are seeing um, are using our smartphone devices. And because of that, we're seeing a huge increase in, in phone call volume. And the reason for that is because it's so much more convenient now. I mean, you don't even have to blink twice or really think about it. If uh, if you have a question or you want to call a dealership right from the mobile or tablet device, essentially, you can just do that click to call feature and um, <clears throat> and call a dealership. So we're seeing actually an increase of calls because of that. And I talked a little bit about smartphone adaptation. You know, over the course of two years, we've seen an increase from 36 to 61 percent, and it's only going to increase from there. Um, you know, kind of a funny story. My uh, my grandpa, he just turned 90 years old this past year, and he's from Medford, Oregon, and he was, he was, uh, he visited us for his 90th birthday, and uh, my grandma was showing me that they got this, they just purchased, like, their first iPhone 6 Plus, and, and it was, he was turning 90 years old, and it was kind of mind-blowing to me, because, you know, it, it's, it's pretty much, you universal uh, when you think about the the people that you know um, you know regardless of, of age or generation uh, most people now have adapted to that smartphone technology which again allows you to u utilize that uh, click to call feature uh, so let's talk about why uh, let's talk about why customers call us um, there's a couple reasons the most common call that typically we hear is availability you know, even though I have a smartphone device or even though I'm looking, doing my research online, if there's a specific car uh, that I see on the website, I want to make sure that it's actually there before I actually, go into this, before I actually go into the dealership. That's the most common call we hear. And if we take ourselves outside of the car business for a moment, uh, not too long ago I was, I was traveling somewhere, I don't remember where, but I had forgotten a, um, I needed a little adapter for my, my MacBook Pro to, um, to hook up to a projector, and I forgot this little adapter that I needed. So I remember being on the airplane, and I was like, oh, shoot, you know, I, I got to find, like, an Apple store where when I land off this plane. And so I'm on my uh, on my computer, and I look to see if there's an Apple store. Well, there's not an Apple store really anywhere near me where I'm going. So then I start looking at, uh, I was like, okay, let me find a Best Buy, because I'm pretty sure Best Buy has this little adapter. Well, then I see, you know, a list of Best Buys that pop up, and... Um, you know, click on the Best Buy website. I see that on their website they carry this little uh, converter that I need. But before I just start driving to all the Best Buys, right? I'm going to call the the Best Buy that's going to be closest to me to make sure that they have that uh, that piece available. So taking that same kind of mindset, I mean, even though customers are going online, typically if there's a specific product or specific need that they uh, that they want, they're going to call and make sure that it's available before they just uh, before they just drive there. So we see that very often as far as availability. Um, and then you know they don't uh, they don't oh that should be number two I apologize uh, they don't trust us. Um, meaning you know unfortunately the car business suffers from a bad reputation. I mean we see it in. Uh, in the, the press, essentially, we're right up there with lawyers and politicians, unfortunately, when it comes to honesty rating. And, you know, that's unfortunate, and we have to look at it every day of how can we overcome uh, this stereotype that, um, that the car business has. And a lot of times customers are calling, again, because, you know, from a <clears throat> consumer standpoint, they might have they had a bad experience maybe way in the past, or they've heard of, you know, a bad experience from someone else. 
and ultimately, you know, they want to call a dealership without actually going into the dealership first because it's it's a fearful place for a lot of people, unfortunately. Um, and like I said, we see it so much in the media. We see we even see it on a lot of uh, recent commercials where they stereotype what the you know what the car salesman uh, essentially is, and so they don't trust us right up from the bat. <clears throat> and then uh, advertisement. Um, you know, uh, a customer might see an advertisement maybe online, maybe on a banner ad. Uh, if you still use print, maybe it was in a print newspaper, but they're calling maybe on an advertisement, uh, whether it be a, a lease payment, a finance uh, special, or uh, maybe a loss leader car. So they're calling on an advertisement they see. And then looking for deals. Um, you know, customers, a lot of customers, you know, wait for certain times of the year. Uh, Memorial Day, Black Friday, 4th of July, end of the month, end of the year. A lot of customers go with that, um, with that type of, uh, you know, that type of mindset where they're going to call a dealership, uh, thinking that they, you know, looking for deals um, when they call in. A little, a little story uh, recently. I don't think my mom's on this webinar, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put her name out there. So I, I recently <laughs> took my mom. Uh, Hi, mom. <laughs> yeah, I don't think my mom's on this webinar, but. Um, fairly recently, I had actually, when I sold cars, I had actually leased her a Honda Honda CRV, and her lease was, um, you know, it was about eight, I want to say eight or nine months out, and she's like, well, she had kind of been like itching to kind of get something new, get something different, and then it was like the last, uh, <coughs> the last day of the month, a couple months ago, and she called me. She's like, hey, do you want to, do you want to take me car shopping today? Because I, I realized, that, you know, it's the last day of the month, and I can get a better deal like on the last day of the month, right? So. I was like, sure, you know, and I kind of went with it. But a lot of customers, again, have been told last day of the month, you know, 4th of July, Black Friday, and so forth, you can get the best deal. So they're calling to uh, look for a deal. And then price shopping, um, you know, it's, a very easy, it's, it's very easy from our perspective to, to put our, our negative hat on, our negative mindset hat on, and say, oh, all customers that call into our dealership, you know, are calling from, for, for best price. And I go to a lot of dealerships, and regardless of where I am, regardless of whether I'm East Coast, West Coast, anywhere in the country, um, you know, they say, oh, it's different here. All of our customers call about best price. But without even realizing it a lot of times, um, a lot of times as a salesperson or as a BDC rep that's, that's actually handling the phone call, a lot of times we actually put ourselves in our own objection corner. And we bring up price um, in, just instinctively uh, before the customer even brings it up. So a lot of times we're the ones that actually bring up um, the price question or best price question uh, without even realizing it. <clears throat> but a lot of them are price shopping. Um, and oh, shoot, looks like we got a poll question. Eliana, what is our poll question for today? Oh, we're going to find out right now. All right, audience, guess what? We have two poll questions for you today. <laughs> The first one is on your screen now. We'd love it if you get involved. We want to know what's happening at your dealership. So the question is, do you currently have all dealership phone-ups recorded? That's right. That's the question. It's the easy one, right? Please select one of the following answers. Yes, and it really helps us improve our phone processes. Yes, but to be honest, we never do anything with those phone-up recordings. <laughs> Gosh, I have no idea. No, management doesn't see value in recording those phone-ups, or no, but maybe we should start. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results. Also want to let you know, we already have some great tweets that have already come out, so thank you so much for getting out there into the Twitter sphere and already putting out some of the great information that Elise is sharing today. We really appreciate it, so keep it coming. We really appreciate it. Again, it's hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio, and Elise Kephart is, of course, at the YouTube Diva. Okay, the votes are still coming in, so let's re redo this question one more time. Do you currently have all dealership phone-ups recorded? Yes, it really helps us improve our phone processes. Yes, but we never do anything with those recordings. Gosh, I have no idea. Nah, management doesn't really care about any of that. Or no, but maybe we should start. Thank you so much, audience, for voting. Really, really help us out. Elise, wait till you see these answers. All right, let's <laughs> All right, let's close this poll and share the results. Audience, thank you so much for your votes. We really appreciate it. All right, a solid half of today's awesome audience, 50%, said yes, they do currently have all of their dealership phone-ups recorded, and it really helps them improve their phone processes. Half, I'm really shocked. That's awesome, right? Was yeah, that, yeah. Is that how I, many I, you thought it would be? 
I I knew that there's yeah I know I know that there's dealers out there but um but uh, I didn't I didn't I mean I didn't think it was gonna be half but uh, that's good that's good okay let's keep going twenty two percent said yes but they admit they don't do anything with those recordings <laughs> Five, right yeah I know I, that's you know I thought that was gonna be more the case but right I, I I have to remind myself I have a really incredibly smart audience. All right, 5% of today's audience said, gosh, I have no idea. 3% of today's audience think management doesn't see value in that. And the remaining 19%, they admit, no, we don't do that, but maybe we should start. Any, okay. Anything you want to say about any of that, Elise? Yeah. Um, no, I think uh, the no, we should start. The remaining, anybody that's not doing it, that should be a higher number. But um, it's, uh, you know, when it comes to calls being recorded, that's the that's the true way to to, you know, to know actually the what your what your uh, how your phone apps essentially are being handled. And um, you know, dealerships that typically do have their calls recorded, um, it's it's interesting some of the responses that uh, that they tell me when they actually just you know log in and just take a little snippet of and listen to some of the calls that are coming in and it's usually like oh my gosh I think I might have just had a, a little bit of a heart attack borderline heart attack heart attack <laughs> listening to some of those calls well so, I mean, but what? it's a, it's a, it's definitely a reality check you know it's a reality check that if you're not doing that that's that's really where you should uh, essentially start yeah I mean <laughs> Joe wrote in he says. He says, we do it, and you're right. We never do anything with them. And Aaron had a great point, and I really appreciate you writing in, Aaron. He says, yeah, but 72% still do record them overall, though, according to the survey. And that's really solid. So that's <laughs> great. And then James, I think James hit it on the head. He said, to be honest, we kind of get embarrassed after listening to how we sound, and we try to solve those little discrepancies. Well, isn't that the right. key, <laughs> Elise? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. It's it it's and it's you know in recording calls we see a lot of times dealer you know management listening to it and then you know what do you do actually with those recorded calls besides oh my gosh you know our calls are horrible so we're gonna we're gonna kind of talk about that a little bit later um, but it was interesting to kind of see where everybody's at as far as calls being recorded and what you're actually doing with uh, with those recorded calls. Oh, my favorite part. Live mystery. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, it's really fun. So, I got some volunteers earlier to earlier uh, when this you and I, Ellie and I, had initially talked about this webinar. So, I'm going to be doing. Um, uh, let's see, it's a couple. I'm going <clears> to <throat> try and squeeze in a couple mystery shops. Um, but before I do the mystery shops, uh, here essentially is what I want to talk about. What makes a uh, a perfect phone up essentially? And just like anything in our industry, you know, so many of us. I remember when I first got in the car business, and um, that I went through, I went through the dealer training, which a lot of times is, you know, there's the books, there's the keys, there's the cars, you know, go at it kind of thing. But I do remember sort of learning the uh, the sales process. And what I mean by the sales process is, okay, Elise, you're gonna you're gonna meet a customer on the lot, you're gonna do the initial greeting, you know, you're gonna do the building rapport, you're gonna do a walk around, you're gonna go on a demo. And we learn those steps ultimately to the sale. But what a lot of dealerships don't focus on is taking that same concept of how do I build a process, right? A step-by-step -step process when it comes to handling the phone. And this essentially is how that process breaks down. So we're gonna do the mystery shops here in just a moment. Um, but the the perfect phone call essentially, it starts off with the greeting and being prepared. And when I talk about the greeting, um, I mean, that's really going to set the entire tone of how the conversation goes. Uh, I'll share a story with you, and I some, some of you that follow me on, on Facebook and so forth probably read about this a while ago. So I'm not the biggest football fan, but my husband is. He's a huge 49ers fan, like ridiculous, just, I mean, his first outfit that he bought for our daughter before she was born was like a 49ers uh, onesie. So he's like diehard 49ers fan. Now, that being said, some of you guys, if you are 49ers fan, know that they're not doing too well. But uh, when the, uh, when the um, football season started this year, I was actually in Las Vegas, I think, for the uh, GM Compass Tour. <clears throat> and I didn't even like go on my phone and cheat. I knew that the 49ers were playing that, that day. And I didn't cheat ahead of time and look at the score. I just, I, I remember calling my husband on the phone. And like right away, 
I knew that the 49ers won, like when he picked up the phone, because you can you can read off of his his tone inflection essentially, or how he sounds, right? If he you know if he would have been in a uh, upset mood or or you know then I probably would have known that the 49ers lost. So taking that into perspective, you know, when when you pick up the phone, not only do you need to be prepared, but you need to set that first impression to the customer, you know, that you're having a great day. And even if you have problems, you know, maybe a deal got unwound, you know, maybe you had to split it, argue about a half deal over over on this side with another salesperson. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, rejection and a lot of negativity that are that we can. Um, we can uh, talk about you know in our industry, but when it comes to uh, picking up the phone, I mean focusing on that initial greeting uh, and having it be positive because customers are going to read off of that. The second step is going to be qualifying, um, <clears throat> and uh, qualifying, for example, would be if a customer was calling on a specific, let's say a specific used car, you know, qualifying and. Uh, and then opening up that funnel, you know, making sure that it's not just only that one vehicle that they're interested in, but are they open to other ones like it, especially if, you know, especially if you had something really nice and you could save them some money. And then we're, we're going to, uh, we want to be sure to obtain that contact information. And this is always amazing to me because, you know, I hear a lot of different ways of, of people trying to get contact information. You know, a lot of times we're like, oh, I'm looking at my caller ID. And, you know, is this your number? Or a lot of times they don't even ask for phone number or name because they just assume, you know, they're going to pull it off of the caller ID. So, but obtaining contact information, because if you don't have contact information, you have to ask yourself, how much did your dealer spend to get that phone call to ring? And if you don't have contact information, then what, like, what good is that going to do you, you know, essentially? But the core purpose of a phone up ultimately is scheduling that appointment. And, you know, we hear a lot of times an appointment being set, well, do you think you're going to come in? Okay, well, I'm going to be here all day. Just come, swing on by and ask for Billy if you're here. And we hear that a lot of times that's how we, that's how we schedule an appointment. But we want to set that appointment, drive towards closure, which is going to wrap up the call. And then, uh, you know, make sure that the customer knows where they're actually going. Um, you have to assume that that customer might have called a few other places. And you want to be able to paint that visual picture to them of, of uh, where they're actually going to be, uh, where they're actually going to be driving driving to. And so um, we're going to do our mystery shops. <clears throat> and um, and I want to let you know there are a lot of people out there who are, are volunteering, and I so appreciate you guys for putting yourself out there. <laughs> um, but actually, we cannot uh, we cannot just call any dealership without the. Uh, the permission from the owner or the GM and so we've already set that up with a couple they're not expecting right. it only the owner and the GM know that it's that it's happening I don't even know that they know it's happening today so right, right. but this is right. this is going to be live just so you know okay. but thank you so much audience members for being willing to throw yourself on the funeral pyre <laughs> okay so and you're going to go easy on them All right, so here we go. I'm going to mute myself. <coughs> Thank you for calling Atlanta Auto Finance. May I help you? Uh, hi, I was online, and I saw a... Um uh, a Mustang, a 14 Mustang, and I wanted to get a little bit of information about it. I can do that. Let me get the marketing department on that right now. They'll need a callback number on you. I'm manning the front desk at the moment. They're all with the banks right now. Okay. Outside having a little meeting. But uh, I want to have them call you right now. Who should they ask for? Uh, my name is Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling. I've just actually moved here to the Atlanta area. Awesome. Okay. And give me a phone number, and I'll have the manager call you. Okay, um, 805 area code. 805. Yeah, I'm going to give you uh, uh, 202. 202. 6967. Awesome, I'll take care of this. And he'll be calling, it'll be, it'll be Patrick or Michael, one of those two will call you right back. Okay, um, all right. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Well, Elise, oh, is that a fail? That's, that's not what I was expecting, you know. It's um, 
here's the thing about disconnecting the call. It's, in fact, the worst thing that you can do, and here is the reason for that. Uh, I don't know how many of you on this webinar have ever worked internet leads, but we know that the focus on internet leads is making outbound calls. And being that I've, I've you know, I worked internet leads for quite a while and I train on it, and I'm actually here at a store uh, um, in Temecula uh, working, working some of the leads. And the most difficult thing typically when uh, you're working leads, it's, it's, it's honestly getting, getting the dang customer on the phone, right? And so here we have disconnected the call. Um, he got my my first name, uh, got my my cell phone, which is my husband's cell phone. But he's expecting, he, he expects that by now. I usually give him his phone number. Um, but now you've disconnected the call, and if you disconnect the call, then it's essentially now getting put into the funnel like an internet lead, where you're going to have to assume that when you call them back, they're going to pick up, and you're probably actually going to get their voicemail, and now it's going to go right into that bucket of leads where it's like, oh, can't get the customer to call me back. So when you get a customer live on the phone, that's like the you don't want to disconnect that call without, you know, and, and say that you're going to call back because a couple reasons. I mean, even if you do, I mean, first of all, a lot of people do that. You know, they might write it on a little a little post-it note, put it here, and then, you know, he's working at the desk and he's doing five million other things, and then it's, you know, he's doing his laundry the next day, and he's like, "Oh shoot, that Rachel! Whoops, I forgot to, you know, I forgot to call back." But even if you, even if you make the effort and say, "Okay, I'm going to have somebody call you back," you call that person, that customer back, and they're probably on the phone with someone else. And by the time you get you get them live on the phone again, it's going to be this call. Now, just so you know. Oh, you did. Oh, what'd you buy? Right. So. <laughs> It's, uh, so go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say, Diane wrote in, and thank you, Diane, for doing that. She said, hey, so that call wasn't good, but Diane thinks it was pretty normal. Oh, yeah. You know, that's definitely, that's normal. So, yeah, you should, that's so as somebody who works at a dealership, you should always try and keep them on the phone. Is that it? I mean, yeah. you go out of oh, your way. Why, right, right. Why disconnect the call? Taking the risk that when you call them back, now they're not going to pick up. I mean, now they're in that that bucket of, of customers that, you know, you got to get back on the phone. And so, when you have a live customer on the phone, you should you should hone that and treasure it and go through the steps to uh, to qualify, obtain contact information, and schedule the appointment. Um, that's that's really the core. But we see that a lot. I mean, we see that a lot. I actually. Was out uh, went out to dinner with one of the um, uh, a friend of mine who I worked with when I first got in the car business down here in um, in San Diego. So he actually he actually lives here in Temecula and he sells cars still. And I was uh, you know I was kind of uh, hanging out with him and talking. We were talking about phone calls and I was like, all right, so let's hear how your phone call would be. And he kind of did the same thing. He's like, all right, well let me go let me call you back. And I'm like, why would you disconnect the call? That's like the worst. The worst thing that you do, he's like, oh, that does make sense. He's like, because, yeah, I, I call a lot of people back, and then it's like they don't pick up, and then I'm like, okay, well, that was a, that was a jack off anyways because he's not picking up his phone. But the truth of it is, you know, customers are calling your dealership for a reason. You know, the majority of them are going to buy something within 10 days. 90% of them are going to be buying something in 10 days when they call your dealership. I mean, I don't. I'm going to be going home this weekend, <clears throat> and I'm doing a lot of travel right now, but I'm not going to go home this weekend wake up to my husband on a Saturday morning and say, hey, babe, what do you want to do today? You know, do you want to go to the beach, go downtown, maybe you'll get some brunch? I'm not going to say, oh, but I got a better idea. This will be really fun. Let's call some dealerships for no reason and, um, you know, just, just just to mess around with them. When people are calling your store, it's such a, 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 good, a good customer. You know, they're calling your dealership typically, like I said, for a specific pre-owned vehicle, and the majority of them, are going to be buying within a 10-day time frame. So there's no reason to disconnect that call. Okay, let's, I didn't mean to guess, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. No, uh, this uh, you're uh, a lot of people have some things to say and you know we're we're what you're doing is you're telling them um, you know from a consumer's point of view, they finally have the time. They looked up your phone number. They're giving you a call. They want to talk about it now. They don't want right. somebody to give you a call back later to talk about it, right? So for right. instance, Diane, she wrote back in and she said, okay, but if you don't have a dedicated staff to assume the responsibility, then you're going to lose. Bobby wrote in, she says, dealerships preach, get the contact info. And he did that, 
with a little training, he could totally knock it out of the park. He was polite. Oh, absolutely. He was friendly. Yeah, absolutely. He even gave the name of the person to expect to call back from. Yes, absolutely. Right. And with that call, I mean, he got my first name, um, and he said, and he he got my phone number. But a lot of times, with the way that you word things, you know, you're gonna you're gonna get a. I mean, a lot of customers to that might have said, uh, you know, I'll just I'll just call back or. You know, if you say, can I get your phone number, the response to that is going to be yes or no. I gave it up pretty easily, but it's all about how you word things, too. So, uh, you know, giving the customer a reason on why you need their contact information. And then the, when you ask for a phone number, instead of can I get your phone number, because that's a yes or no answer, you know, are you calling from your home or cell phone today? That's an A-B choice. And we use A-B choices all the time. I don't know, Eliana, about you, but my husband and I always have the fight about what do you want for lunch today or what do you want to get for dinner? Oh, my and it's God, like, yeah. You know, Okay. Well, I don't really care. And then you, and it's like this 20-minute debate, and then you're like, oh, I, you know, it's like this little argument. But try this, Eliana, if you haven't done this already. Say, hey, what do you want to have for dinner tonight? Do you want to, you want me to pick up Mexican or do you want to get Thai food? And more likely than not, he's gonna say, oh, you know what? Yeah, Thai food actually sounds good because you've given him, you've given the person options. So when you're asking a question. You know, the either or format is, and not just in, not just on the phone up, but just in general, just in like marriage counseling. No, right? I, I <laughs> and I'm going to try that next time because he asked me all the time. I'm like, dude, seriously, if I had an opinion, I promise I would tell you. I don't have an opinion. Okay, so right. let me get to a couple more of these because I got so many great comments. So Penny sure. wrote in. Penny wrote in when someone has car fever. They're going to just call the next dealer if they can't get a salesman right then and there. Orlando agrees. Orlando says, I completely agree with Elise. When they call, you've got to take advantage of that call. Paul right. says, I appreciate strong communication skills, and you're doing a great job. And, right. um, okay, Richard, this is interesting. He says, how do you balance giving the customer the information you need to give them and not have them be so informed that they don't need to come and see you? Right, and that's the key because a lot of times as salespeople, we tend to put our our sales hat on and and want to sell the car over the phone. And really, the whole objective of of a phone call is to set set that appointment because statistically, 86% of buyers are going to buy something different from what they originally inquired on. And I can even vouch for that. When we got our uh, MDX last year. I originally wanted a completely different car, and it wasn't actually until I went to the dealership that I ended up getting something different. This last purchase that I just literally made this last on over the weekend, and the car that I ended up getting was not the exact color and the exact trim package that I had initially inquired on. And so again, to, to focus on selling the car over the phone is the is first off, it's uh, you don't have a lot of leverage, you know, because when you're with a customer, when a customer's at your dealership and they're face to face with someone, you know, the customer and the salesperson can, you have body language essentially to communicate with. And on the phone, that's a struggle for a lot of people because you don't have body language and they, they tend to go off on, on trying, to, trying to sell the car over the phone and uh, ultimately it's, it's about setting the appointment. So if they, if they go in and ask for an, uh, you know, a question, that ultimately is an objection and you're going to acknowledge the objection, handle it, and then kind of go right back for the appointment. I'm hoping that we get a really good call here. <laughs> that that last one um, is, to, you know, it's typical for that to happen. But if that person does uh, does call back or calls my husband back, because that's the number I gave, then um, you know the, that customer could have already moved on to the next dealership. Because if we don't, as a customer, if we don't like what we hear on the phone, then we're just going to go. You know, it's like when I went shopping for Best Buy. If if the first place didn't pick up, I'm going to call the next place until I find the answer that I'm looking for. So. Yeah. All right. We're now, gonna for, call, instance, uh, for, for instance, I just want to let you know, Jason, who sounds like he's in management, he wrote in, the money spent on advertising to get those calls are worth a whole lot of money. And some salespeople and reps just don't see the kind of value that they just threw out the window. And then Scott wrote in, I can't believe the dealer thinks that process is going to work. What customer is so, <laughs> that customer has so moved on already. If she gave a yeah. real number and they haven't called back yet. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, all right. So we're going to uh, try and get one more in here. Um, nine. And by the way, Corey says, how would you have done it differently? Corey, we are going to hear a perfect phone up. I'm sure of it. So stay tuned. Well, I'm hoping. I want to get, I want to give some, some money away. So we'll, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay. Make sure this is on. Maximum volume.
It's a great day at Epic Auto Sale. My name is Gwen. How can I help you today? Hi, Gwen. Um, I was calling. I was online, and I saw an MDX that you guys have on your website, and I wanted to know if uh, if it was still there. Yeah, that's a really nice one. We've actually had a few calls on it today. Um, let me do this so I don't waste any of your time. Let me check on the availability for you. It'll probably just take me about 10 minutes. Okay. Are you calling from home or work? Uh, I'm calling from my cell phone. Okay, and your cell phone number is? Uh, I will give you my uh, 805. Uh-huh. Uh, 441-3398. Okay, and how do I spell your last name? Uh, Davis, D-A-V-I-S. And your first name is? Rachel. Okay, perfect. And while I'm checking on that, after MDX, let me ask you, is it specifically and only the MDX that you're looking for, or would you be open to others, especially if I have something really nice and can save you some money? Um, I'm, I'm looking for a, like a larger SUV, um, so, and, and, but I, I kind of like the, the Acura products, um, I, I don't need the, uh, the third row, but just something, something V6 at least, and something a little bit larger in size. Okay, perfect. Well, you know what, my manager just walked by, let me just ask him real quick, I should be able to find out for you right now, do you mind if I put you on hold for just a moment? Uh, no, that's fine. Okay, just one sec. Oh, you know what? Sorry. Um, yeah, no problem. Thank you for holding. Oh, no problem. Based on our inventory, we actually have a great availability right now. Um, speaking of availability, when are you more available, right now or later today? Um, I'm going to probably have to run it by my husband. <clears throat> um, he's off work a little bit later today, so I have to check with him. Okay. All right. I completely understand. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Let's set up a tentative time that you can come and stop in. We get pretty busy around here, and that way you're not waiting on us. We're waiting on you. Okay. Um, well, he gets off work at about 5, so it'll probably be like, I mean, um, I have to just double check with him, but it'll probably be like around 5.30-ish. Around 5.30? Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay. Um, perfect. So let me go ahead and write that down. And do you have a pencil handy? Um, let me grab a let me grab a pen. Okay, I got one. <clears throat> okay, I have something important for you to write. Um, D O L L. Uh huh. That's my last name, and my first name is Gwen. G W E N. Okay. And my direct dial number is area code four one zero. Yep. Three five zero. Okay. 9135. Okay. And then I'm also going to send you an email with some information. Should I send that to your home or work email address? Um, go ahead and do <coughs> my, uh, my home address. Okay. And how should I spell that? Um, that's going to that's gonna be Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, uh, C-A, the letter C-A, and then uh -huh. uh, the number 77 at gmail.com. Gmail. Okay, so I have your appointment right around 5.30, and I have that in my appointment book as well. If you're going to be a little bit earlier late, you know, just let me know, and I will work around your schedule, and I'll make sure we have vehicles pulled up and ready for you to see. Oh, okay. And if, if you don't mind me asking, how was it you heard about our dealership? Um, I was just online, and I was just looking for. Uh, I just moved to uh, to the area, and I was just looking for used at for used Acuras. Um, I'm not, oh, perfect! Yeah. Well, welcome to the area. Thank you. Do you already know where we're located since you're a little newer? Um, I was just gonna put you guys in my in my navigation. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really like I said, I'm not really sure, but just gonna put you in my navigation. Okay. 
Well, what side of town are you going to be coming from? Um, I'm going to be coming from like the downtown Houston area. Okay, perfect. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you can get over to 290. Okay. There's a million different ways to get there from downtown, but typically I like to take I-10 over to the Beltway. Okay. And then you can go up on the Beltway, go outbound on 290. Yeah. And then once you exit Huffmeister, we'll be right at Huffmeister and Cypress North Houston. Okay. All right, cool. Well, I really, um, really appreciate it. Um, Gwen is Gwen, Gwen right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, Gwen. So um, I have a confession to make. You're actually on a live webinar right now, and uh, we're testing oh, out. Really? Yeah, we're we're testing out phone skills, and you just nailed the perfect phone up. Like literally, that was spot on. Yay, Gwen! Um, <laughs> oh, awesome. So um, I am going to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set you up with a uh, customized v uh, Visa gift card that I will uh, get information for. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get you a, a customized Visa card because we bas I basically put out this contest uh, online and, um, and your dealership volunteered for it. So you, uh, you're the lucky winner. So, hey, I really appreciate, I mean, awesome phone skills. Um, you nailed everything perfectly. There, there wasn't one thing that I could say that was done incorrectly. So you just basically showed, you know, a lot of people on this webinar how to handle the phone. So great job. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. All right. Awesome. I will. Uh, I'll get in touch with you and your dealer, and um, it's, uh, I'll, you'll be getting a, a prize your way here pretty soon. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank All right. You. Keep keep it up. Awesome. Okay. Bye, -bye right. now. Thanks. Bye. Sorry, you're not going to be selling a car to Rachel today, but hey. Um, <laughs> that, and that, that is actually, I was like, <clears throat> I, that's that's one of my friend's names and her email address. I probably should text her and, or I get, and be like, hey, if you get an email <laughs> about an MDX. Um, no, so that, I mean, uh, that was like, I, I don't know if you guys saw my face. That was like literally the, the perfect phone app, like just top to bottom, um, enthusiastic, uh, got you know qualified, opened up that funnel to see, hey, is it just the Acura MDX that you're interested in? But you know, before she did that, she gave me the customer reason on sharing contact information. And just as I kind of discussed earlier, you know, there's a a way to do that rather than say, can I get your phone number? She gave me that reason of, you know, it's going to take me about 10, 15 minutes to check on this. Uh, are you calling from your home or cell? And that number is, or I think she said home or work. And that number is. And then she went for my last name first you know, and then my first name, and then she said, hey, and while I'm checking on this, let me ask you, you know, was it just this one car? So she opened up that funnel that you're interested in, um, and then it was, you know, hey, I just thought of something. I can get this information for you right now, um, and so she didn't disconnect that call, and for a minute there, I was like, is she going to disconnect the call? Because that's, that's typically, that a lot of times happens, you know, let me go check on it. It should take me, and then they disconnect the call, but then it's like, it's going back to that factor. Once you disconnect the call, like, your chances of getting that customer back on the phone could be very slim to none. So what you know, you don't want to you don't want to take that chance, and you want to go right back for the appointment, uh, which was awesome. I even uh, threw, threw a little um, you know a common objection, which is, hey, I got to talk to my husband, and she took it, you know, acknowledged, hey, I understand, and then kind of threw it right back at me. So I'm that was I'm blown away by that. That was absolutely like to a T perfect. So. Uh, that, to answer all your questions, as far as a, a perfect phone up, that's going to be our $100 winner today. And that step-by-step -step just went through the, the proper phone up uh, all the way through. So um, so that's that was an awesome, awesome job. And, and Richard wrote in, he said, I agree, that was perfect. Bobby wrote in and said, wow, she killed it. Do we know yeah. her Twitter handle? Let's all give her a shout out. So I don't know. I don't know. Can we say yeah, the dealership no. she's from? Gwen from where? Uh, she's from Epic Auto Sales. Epic Auto Sales. So I'm actually going to be going out to uh, to their to their store here in December. They're they're based right out of Houston, um, independent car lot. But uh, the um, the owner of the dealership is is awesome. His name's Scott, and um, and the whole team there is just is. I mean, Epic Auto Sales. Like they're they're literally like an Epic team. They're they're really good. So I um you know I'm not so they. I, I, I went out there, I went out to Epic Auto Sales probably about, um, I would say a year and a half ago. Um, it was kind of right when I made the transition from, uh, from leaving the dealer. And, uh, and Gwen had actually gone through my training. And it's awesome to see that she, you know, she still, she still goes by, 
you know, the full step process and handling and on how to handle a phone up. So, um, so that is a to a T a perfect phone up. <clears throat> that was but, pretty epic. But, that, <laughs> but but yeah, pretty epic. But again, I know that that Gwen's been there for a while, and I know that uh, when I first went out to that dealership a year and a half ago, um, you know, they. Uh, she she was fairly new to the car business, so it's not like you know the expectation of that it's gonna, that things like this are going to happen overnight. It's just like anything, you know. It's going to take that 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 mindset of okay, I need to get better on the fo my phone skills, and I'm going to dedicate you know dedicate myself to making sure that I handle a phone up properly every single time. Um, because you know the tip typical reason on why training fails <clears throat> is most uh, salespeople, most dealers go through training. You know, and that might be an on-site trainer, that might be virtual training. You know, here we're going to have an on-site trainer come and teach you guys, or here we're going to give you a login to watch all these videos and take some tests. But then after that, it's like, okay, now what? Now we've, now we've gone through the training, you know, and now we've watched the videos, we've taken some tests, and then it's like, you know, go at it, become, you know, just, just be rock stars on the phone. But the... The problem with that is there's no consistency, you know, there's no accountability. And so ultimately the fix, you know, it's not a magic pill. It's we see those advertisements like, oh, you want to lose weight, just have this, you know, magic pill that you're gonna take and it's and you're suddenly gonna drop like fifty pounds, you know. When you compare it to that thing that that aspect of things, if if I wanna, you know, trim up a little bit and get fit, it's it's not gonna be a magic pill that's gonna do it for me. And even if I go and go to the, go and buy a gym membership and get some new workout clothes, and I'm like, oh, it's not gonna happen until I actually, you know, follow through with my plan and make sure that I'm consistently holding myself accountable to do the things I need to do, um, including you know going to the gym, eating right, and so forth. So taking that aspect of why training fails typically, training is the initial start. You know, to to be training to have that that initial training on how to properly take a phone up or how to properly make outbound calls or how to properly voicemails. Taking that training, um, having a certification program put into place, but then evaluating it. You know, once you learn the training, are you are your salespeople, is your team actually abiding by the, the training material that they learned? And the, the reason that uh, one of the poll questions earlier was are you recording your calls, because that's going to help you determine, right, if the training that uh, that you have given them, if they're actually applying it. And if they're not applying it, you're going to take those calls, right, take the, the, the real things that they're doing on the phone, evaluate them, retrain them, and hold them accountable. You know, the, the most, um, you know, the most successful people that, uh, that are good on the phone, like I said, it doesn't happen overnight, but it kind of just took that uh, reiteration kind of over and over until eventually it just becomes second nature, it just becomes habit. My background when it comes to phone training, I will, I will gladly raise my hand and say, you know, when I first got in the car business, I never got training on the phone. Um, when I was even doing, when I first started doing all the video stuff, uh, when I was selling cars at the Honda store, um, even at that point I never really got any formal phone training. I got training on other stuff like how to do a walk around and, and things like that and product knowledge, but I started to realize, you know, in a short period of time that train a lot of training doesn't stick. It takes, you know, it takes repetition, constant repetition, repetition until eventually it just becomes, uh, like I said, it just becomes second nature on what you're supposed to say and how to overcome objections and how to go through that process um, when handling the phone. So. I hate to say it, but there's going to be no magic fix. Essentially, uh, it's not a, it's not it's it's not a magic you know magic wand where suddenly you're great on the phone. It takes that initial training, certification, uh, you know, recording your calls, evaluating your current processes happening in place, and then um, you know, reevaluating and holding holding your team and holding your salespeople accountable uh, when it comes to the phone. I love <clears> it. <throat> By the way. Um, Kevin, yes. Kevin wrote in, I mean, we have a lot of people that wrote in, I'm not going to lie, all right? Mm -hmm. Kevin wrote in and he says, I know Scott over at Epic Auto and yeah. he is all about the process. Really yeah. great team over there in Houston, Texas. So thank yeah. you again. Um, we already yeah. have Bobby out there who's given a shout out over to mm -hmm. Gwen over at Epic Auto Sales. And um, uh, John said, can we get a recording of that phone call with Gwen? It would be great to play in our sales meeting. Guess what, John? 
I recorded that whole darn thing for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're recording this right now, actually, and I'm going to be sending that link out to you later today. It's also going to be posted online within 24 hours over at dealeron.com slash webinar, where you can view any of our past webinars. It's going to be at the top of the list, of course. And so don't you worry about it. Yes, we did get that recorded. And awesome. audience, if you have any questions for Elise, get those questions in. We're going to grill her and see if she can give you any more information, any more sage advice on how you can do a perfect phone up too. Nice. Elise, keep going. You're doing great. So ultimately kind of a wrap up of what, uh, what we would discuss here. I mean, the, I don't think it's brain science to know that the customers calling into your store are extremely you know, our, our, our buyers, they are going to be buying a vehicle typically within 10 days. And so when it comes to the phone, there's no reason to not take the phone seriously. The phone ultimately is your weapon. And we can make excuses all day long about, um, you know, <clears throat> oh, traffic is slow and, you know, we don't have enough inventory and uh, people just have to pay taxes uh, so they're not buying anything or people are waiting on their taxes and so we're going to, or people are waiting till Black Friday. You know, wherever I go, you could literally laundry, you could write a book on all the excuses on why, you know, why things aren't happening. But the most successful people in our industry, you know, they don't have any slumps. They don't have any, any bad months because they've developed, you know, they're constantly training, constantly learning. Um, and ultimately, they've developed a process to where every day on a consistent basis, you know, you're making your own, you're, it's up to you. There's no, there's no such thing as circumstances, and you're making your, uh, your own success at the end of the day. And part of that, again, is developing a consistent process. If you don't have a process and you don't have a plan in place and you're just kind of winging it, then unfortunately that's not going to work. And if, if that's you listening to this and you're like, oh, yeah, I do kind of just wing it, um, that is not going to work. And if you continue to think that's going to work, well, that's probably the definition of insanity, which is, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And then, you know, <clears throat> from, um, you know, from a dealership standpoint, you know, when it comes to the phone, uh, someone mentioned earlier that dealers spend just a ridiculous amount of money for advertising, you know, to get leads and to get that phone to ring. And, um, if that if once that phone call is picked up, if it's blotched, then again, all that money, it's you're not getting the maximum value for your advertising dollars. And it's the same thing with internet leads because well, internet leads are a little bit, you know, you gotta get them live on the phone. Same thing when you call an internet lead, now that internet lead is essentially to a certain degree very similar to a phone app. And so if you handle your internet leads and you then you get the internet lead on the phone and you don't know how to handle that phone call, then you've essentially just kind of uh, diminished your uh, your advertising dollars. So take the phone uh, seriously and develop a consistent process. Um, Eliana, I think uh, <clears throat> what what I, I I didn't give this to you. I should have given this to you ahead of time. But uh, as far as any type of uh, any type of scripts or objection handling techniques that you guys want, um, you know, email me or or shoot me a text, and I'll be happy to share that with you. Um, when it comes to handling the phone for an inbound call, outbound call, and so forth, I'll be happy to provide you with uh, some 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 free tools uh, when it comes to scripts and so forth. Right, audience, don't forget her email address is Elise Kephart Experience at gmail dot com. Also, um, if you look in the handouts section of this GoToWebinar interface, you will find a copy of Elise's slide deck. All right, now I know she didn't have a lot written down, but the stuff she wrote down, pure gold, all right? So if you didn't write it down yourself, then the easiest way to do it would be just to simply download the handout that's already <laughs> waiting for you, okay? Elise. All right. Hey, don't we have a second poll question? Oh. I, I don't know. I, we... that? <laughs> I have uh, a second poll question over here. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, we do have a second poll question. I just, I probably just uh, missed it. So let's, uh, what's that? What's our second poll question? Hey, let's do that. All right, audience, we have our second and final poll question on there, and then we're going to get to your questions and maybe give away some liquor. All right, so here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the questions on the screen now. We'd love it if you get involved. When it comes to phone training at your dealership, which statement describes it accurately? Please select one of the following answers. We consistently do in-house phone training. We do in-house phone training somewhat infrequently. We have an outside trainer that comes in quarterly. Oh, I remember doing phone training once or twice. 
Yeah, we, we don't really do phone training. We want to know what's going on at your dealership. Please let us know when it comes to phone training at your dealership, which statement describes it best. You are doing in-house phone training all the time. You do in-house phone training some of the time. <laughs> you have an outside trainer that comes in quarterly. Oh, yeah, you remember doing it once or twice, but then they just set you off on your own. Or, yeah, we don't really do phone training. Phone training, what's that? They, they don't <laughs> give us that kind of training. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll, share the results. And we have a lot of people who wrote in some really great comments, Elise. I can't wait to get to them. And audience, if you have some more questions for Elise Kephart, get those questions in. We're going to be getting to those very, very shortly. Um, already people are writing in awesome webinar. Of course, I didn't have any doubt. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right, audience, thank you so much for your votes. Elise, are you ready to see this? I'm ready. Oof, wait till you see these results. All right, audience, thank you so much. Let's close this poll. We're going to share these results. Okay, the majority, 36%. They say that they consistently do in-house phone training. 36%. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at that. I did not think it would be that high. I'm pleasantly surprised. Of course, mm -hmm. we'd always love to see that, that number go a little bit higher, right? Right, right. Okay. 19% of today's audience said that they do in-house phone training, but they do it, you know, some of the time, infrequently, mm -hmm. all right? 3% of today's audience said that they have an outside trainer that comes in quarterly to help them with their phone training. 16% of today's audience said that they remember doing phone training once or twice. And then, yeah, the shocking part, 27%, so more than a quarter of my very, very smart audience said they admit they really don't do phone training. Hopefully, though, they can see the value in doing some phone training because it is not an overnight thing for you to get as good as Gwen from Epic Auto Sales. Uh -huh. To get that yeah. good, I mean, I taught uh, you living it. and I don't think I could have done that <laughs> without some training. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to send her a gift card and some wine because that was just that blew me away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Elise, did that help you out with that, that question there? Yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. And then we're back over at, I don't know what had it keeps kicking you out. I don't know why. There uh, we go. Okay, Joe wrote in, Phone Ninja's Rule. Uh, Jennifer wrote in, thanks so much, ladies. You're very welcome. And uh, Michael, he said, we do daily training. I sit with my team in the pit. And I guess he coaches them as they go along. Wow. Um, right. Boy, we have a lot of great questions from the audience. Thank you so much. Elise, are you ready for questions from the audience, or should we give away a prize? Let's give away a prize. Agreed. It's that time. You can go to the next slide. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, that's right, that's right. I announced that our awesome friend, Elise Kephart, she's going to be giving away an awesome prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a bottle of the awesome Sausalito Canyon River Gold Wine. <laughs> if you don't drink, you can send it over here to your favorite webinar goddess, Eliana, over here in the Jers. But if you do, then I, 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 I'm a little jealous, all right? This is going to be perfect for the upcoming holidays, or, you know, Tuesday. And all you have to do is answer a simple question about the presentation. So I need you to get ready, get to your keyboards, get those fingers nice and nimble. First one to write in a correct response. It's going to be walking away with this cool prize today. Vendors, we know you're out there and we do appreciate you, but we're going to ask you to please kindly sit this one out. This prize is intended for dealership personnel only. All right, here we go. Good luck, everyone. This is not an easy question. I hope you guys took great notes. Earlier in the presentation, Elise discussed all the reasons why customers call to speak to a salesperson. We need you to name four of them. Name four. There were five. We want four of them. Don't give them to me one at a time. Are you giving them to me one at a time? No, I'm not doing that. Put all four of them in one line, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I think we might have it. Let me read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a winner. Jason Duncan, you were the first one to write in four consecutive uh, <laughs> answers. Jason wrote in. Let me see. I have to scroll up here. Jason Duncan, congratulations. He wrote of 
availability, no trust, advertising, and looking for a deal. And then the last one was price shopping. So congratulations, Jason <laughs> Duncan, writing down your name right now. Jason, do me a, do me a solid and uh, send me your mailing address so we can get that that wine out, oh, or, or do you, would you just want me to give her my address? You let me know, Jason. <laughs> Whatever's easier on you. I'm just trying to make it easier on you, okay? Jason, congratulations. Where are you from, dude? <laughs> oh, he's from Port Arthur, Texas. Congratulations. What, what dealership are you from? So we can give you a high five, a virtual high five, but whatever. And then uh, audience, thank you so much for playing along. And it's okay, we know you didn't win today. It's all right. Lots of people didn't win today, but you know what? We give away cool, awesome, uh, valuable prizes every single week on our Dealer On webinars. So you didn't win today, it's okay. Come back for another Dealer On webinar, and who knows, that could be your lucky day to walk away with a prize. But today, it was Jason Duncan from Twin City Motors. Congratulations, Jason. Thank you, everyone, for playing along. And of course, we gotta thank our good friend, the YouTube diva, Elise Kephart herself, putting on such an awesome show and giving away such a cool prize. All right, Elise, are you ready for some questions from the audience? Uh, yes, I am. I am. I know, your phone's going crazy because yeah. we're getting a lot of tweets, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of tweets. Okay, we're going to go, we're going to take it all the way back towards the beginning of the webinar. Alicia wrote in a great comment, and I want you to comment on this, Elise, because I know that you, you have this wrapped up. Alicia wrote in, Embarrassed is completely accurate, and she was talking about when they go over the recordings of, you know, the phone-ups. So she says, embarrassed is completely accurate, but constant monitoring could maybe tear someone down, though. So Elise, really, mm -hmm. pop Alicia out and other people. How do you constantly monitor somebody's phone-ups without making them feel like they are completely not good at it like how do you build somebody up without tearing them down <laughs> no and it, it, it goes back to even like what we're talking about the with the phone I mean it's 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 when you're training somebody and when you're critiquing them you know if if you focus solely on the negative and you just paint this positive and and we all have heard of managers that uh, that do that you know that that scare their salespeople or um, you know and so there's there's definitely a balance of uh, you know, painting good things that were good about the call and then also things that they could work on, you know, things that, that need improvement so that you have that balance. But more so, it also, you know, if I'm a manager, um, if I'm a manager that's coaching or I'm maybe a team leader or a BDC director, you know, I also have to uh, practice what I preach. And so what I mean by that is, you know, I know that if if I'm a BDC rep or I'm a sales rep and I'm taking coaching from a you know from a manager or a BDC director, then I expect to you know I want to be inspired by that person essentially that is that is coaching me or I want to know that hey if if my manager or if my uh, BDC director took a phone up to you know this person knows what they're talking about because they you know they can handle I've I've heard them take a phone up and and gosh you know that that they get really good results from it so. Um, we see that a lot where, you know, you have managers that just kind of bark, bark, bark and focus on the negative uh, with their sales reps and then also that, that fine line of, hey, you know, does the manager know how to take a phone up too or are they, you know, they're saying you, the, the, your sales people, they're telling their sales people to do one thing and then they're not, you know, they're not doing it them, themselves. So uh, there definitely is a, a fine balance there though. I hear you. I hear you. Alicia, if you have uh, further questions, hey, we're here right now. Don't hang up on us. Right back on in and let's see if we can help you some more, okay? Thank you so much for the great question. All right. Um, Corey wrote in a lot earlier. How would you have done it differently now? That was before we got Gwen on the phone. And remember right. I said, hold yeah. on, Corey. You're, gonna, you're probably going to hear a perfect one. So now that we had Gwen on there, was there anything? I mean, if you had to nitpick, was there anything that you would have done differently or anything that you would have done to improve on what Gwen had already done other than it just being my own tone my own voice and you know my own tone inflection I mean uh, it, it that's the thing about with with when it comes to a process you know it, one of the hardest things to to train on is just cuz I I like sound a certain way yes it's important to have tone inflection and so forth but 
you know, I could tell Gwen's, Gwen's personality, the way she's like that, that might not be the way that I identically sound on the phone, but as far as like the, the individual step-by-steps of how, you know, how she got my contact information and stressing urgency of, you know, I mean, that MDX is really nice. You know, her, her, it, I, I guess it's, it's, everything about the call was perfect, but listening to that call, you know, you have to be sure to, to, when you take a phone call, you want, you know, people um, read off of personality and, and, and tone, and so if you're just, you know, just taking down notes and saying, okay, this is what Gwen said, or this is what a perfect phone call is, you know, you have to find a way to take what you're saying and make sure that you put your personality into it and, and have, you know, have the right tone inflection because um, if you sound like a poser or honestly you sound like a robot and you sound like a cheese ball, then people are going to see that a mile away. You know, so it's important to uh, train yourself to still, you know, still be yourself, still have your personality on it, but everything as far as, um, as far as her process and her word tracks and the either or and opening up the funnel, everything about that call was absolutely spot on. I loved it too. I got to tell you, I really loved it. She would have sold me. I would have showed up at 5.30. Okay. <laughs> right, right. Um, Corey did write back in and Corey said, great job. Jody and Barry learned the correct way to do phone ups. <laughs> okay. Thanks, <Yeah>. Corey. <laughs> awesome. uh, Jason, I need you to write on in and tell me your zip code. You gave me an address and no zip code. <laughs> Unless you want me to give you the zip code from New Jersey, Jason, I already said that. Okay, so thank you so much for that. Let's get to some more questions. Mel, Mel wrote in, there are some times when you must offline a customer in order to do research to answer their questions. It's the minority of calls, though, and you should at least go for a conditional appointment before hanging up. But if your default process is to offline the customer after gathering contact information, you're missing the boat on a lot of appointments. Is that correct? So I guess just give me an example of what like a, a question is. What question would you, you mean what question would a... To, or to where you would have to offline it. That's my question. Mel, can you answer that for us? What question would you possibly think would be too hard to answer right off the bat that you would have to hang up with that customer? <coughs> Hopefully Mel will write back in. Mel, I'm talking to you. <laughs> he didn't write back um, in. Well, you know, and a lot of times what happens is a customer might call in with with an objection. You know, they might say, um, uh, "Hey, I want to know. I didn't, I didn't have uh, your your website didn't have pictures on that red Honda Accord. Can you tell me what the inside? You know, what color the inside is? You know, it says it's red, but what color is like the interior?" And from there, before, you know, you're going to acknowledge the question and say, hey, you know what, I definitely want to find that out for you, but before I waste any of your time, I, uh, that vehicle is really nice, and I know that we've received a few phone calls on it recently, and I just want to double check and make sure that it is still available, it doesn't have any pending sales. You know, it should take me about 10 to 15 minutes, are you calling, and then go through, like, so acknowledge it, and go through the steps, open up the funnel, and then when you come back from hold and go for the appointment like Gwen did, a lot of times they forget, like, the initial question that they even asked. Um, so a lot of times you, just by acknowledging it and then go right, kind of just acknowledging it and then veering right back to, hey, before I waste any of your time, I'm going to find that information out for you. But I do want to just double check and make sure that that vehicle is is available. It is really nice and we've received a few phone calls on it recently. So it should take me, you know, only about 10, 15 minutes. So um, that is, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I just got a text message. So that is... <laughs> That, that's like the best way to, to kind of, a lot of times if you just kind of acknowledge it and then continue on, sometimes they forget what they initially asked. Right, right. All right. Oh, uh, Mel wrote back in and he said, was this specific s car smoked in, it could also be handled by live transfer. <coughs> that was, uh, the, was this, so he wanted to know if, yeah, if the car that they were calling in on, you know, was owned by a smoker before. Right. So with that, then if it was owned by a smoker, hey, you know, I'm going to find that out for you. That's a really great question. Most of our, you know, all of our vehicles go through our full, you know, 150 point inspection. Um, but let me do, let me do this. Um, and in, the, in that 150 point inspection, you know, we want to make sure that they are, you know, um, in uh, the top notch condition. And I know typically, you know, that smoke smell can um, linger. Is not a very yeah, it's not a very, it can linger. So I am going to find that out for you, but I prefer, but first what I want to do is I do want to make sure that that vehicle is still available because it is really nice. 
And I know that um, uh, in our group here, we've received a few phone calls on it recently. So let me just double check, make sure it's still available. It should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Are you calling from your home or cell phone today? All right, great. And that number is? And how do I spell your last name correctly? All right, and your first name is? And while I'm checking on, um, on that Honda Accord, let me ask you, uh, was it specifically and only that Honda Accord that you were interested in? Or if I had something really nice, especially if I could save you some money, uh, would you be open to other ones like it? Right, and then go, you know, open up that funnel. And so, and if you, you know, come back and go for the appointment and they bring up that objection again, <clears throat> um, then sometimes in that in that scenario, if they, if they remember the question, sometimes you will have to, you know, disconnect the call. But that's also part about, that's also about, you know, knowing your inventory. When I was selling cars, you know, and we learned this from, from day one, it's part of, you know, as, you know, it, it's important to know your inventory and um, to have an idea of what cars, you know, do smell like smoke, if there are any, you know, because that's, you don't want to, just like if, if a salesperson, let's say, is selling cars on the lot, you don't want to show a car and then be like, oh, whoops, I forgot this one smells like smoke, you know, so you want to have a, you know, that type of question if if I was working at a dealership, I would essentially know the answer to um, the answer to already because I would be I'd be familiar with my inventory. Same thing if somebody calls and says, "Hey, what kind of lease specials do you have on you know the Buick Enclave right now?" You need to know what Buick or what your manufacturer is offering in your zip code as their promotions because <clears throat> you know what typically makes a car sale as a car salesperson a professional. I was told this once is. You know, you, you sell more cars in a, a month than most people buy in a lifetime. And so if you're, if you're asked a question such as, hey, what's your lease special? And you're like, oh, I don't know, let me go on the website and check. You know, that, that's not very professional. It means you're not taking your job seriously and making sure that you, you know, you have um, the knowledge to be able to, you know, answer a, a basic question like that. Right, right, right. Okay, we do have a ton of questions to get to, Elise. So let's try and flip through some of these as quickly as possible. Um, Orlando wrote in, information overload. The more you share with the customer, the better the chance you have of getting them to come in. But the customer will not remember everything you've told them, but because you were able to answer the questions, you have the upper hand. So is there a line of demarcation where you've given them too much information? Well, I try and avoid uh, really, I don't, I, I try and avoid really giving too much information away because if you give all the information away, so, and I only am going to give information if they, if I can't overcome it, like, so again, if, if they ask me a question like what's a lease payment or what's, what's, you know, what's a special lease or what's the special APR, if they ask me, I want to be knowledge, uh, knowledgeable to know that answer, but then I'm going to go right back into whatever step process, uh, step that I was in the phone call. Um, because if you give all the information over the phone, you know, then you're, again, you're, you're trying to sell the car, trying to sell the, make the deal happen over the phone. And while that is possible, again, your best chance of, of earning that customer's business is when they're going to be face-to-face -face with you at the dealership. Got you. All right. And uh, along with Orlando's question, then we also have Carlos who wrote in, is it possible to ask for too much information that it makes the customer feel <coughs> uncomfortable? Name, number, email, work, and home, last name, first name, etc. Do you find that? Um, um, if you do it in the right way, no. But if you if you do it if you do it if you don't give the customer a reason, so we listened to Gwen's call. That was pretty much that was spot on all the way through. And to me, that that was not at all aggressive. But what we hear and why a lot of times uh, it, it fails when trying to get contact information is, okay, well let me get your number. Okay, well I got to get your name. Uh, well I got to log you in my system. Well, because my boss says I gotta get all this information and put it in your system, but you know, and it's like the wrong way of doing it. So once you once you get you know get familiar with the right steps and it becomes natural to you, then you're not gonna run into that problem um, as far as getting too much. And you're not getting all of it up front. And again, it's the way that you ask. You know, it should take me about 10-15 minutes. Are you calling from your home or cell phone? All right, great. And how do I spell your last name correctly? You know, and your and your first name is. And so it's it's the way that you ask it, and, then, and again, it goes into also the way that you sound on the phone, you know, and that starts off with that initial greeting. I mean, I always like to compare it, if I went to like a fast, uh, <coughs> like a fast food restaurant, let's say, and the guy at the counter was like, yeah, can I help you? 
you know, that's not a very warm and polite greeting, like when you go into a, you know, you go into like a jack-in-the-box or whatever it is. Um, and then if they, if you say, okay, I'm going to get this and I don't want, I don't want a sweetener in my iced tea, that's for Bobby Heron out there, and then they put sweetener in your iced tea, you're like, dang it, you put sweetener in my iced tea and you didn't, you know, you weren't, you, I didn't get a warm feeling when you greeted me at the counter. So you're a little upset versus if you go to Chick-fil-A and, uh, you know, you order an iced tea, like you go to Chick-fil-A and they're like awesome, just really energetic and really positive and they have, they, they like treat their customers, you know, they're smiling all the time. And if they put sweetener in my iced tea, you know, I would, I wouldn't be upset about it or I'd be lot less likely to be upset and, and standoffish because the person was so friendly to me. Um, you know, initially. So kind of taking that same concept. I feel you. I feel you. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for the great question. We had a ton of questions about the phone scripts. Some people were giving guesses as to who, where they got the script from, were they proactive? I mean, so um, before I go into the details, because we got like six different questions from six different people about the scripts, right. what can mm -hmm. you say about scripts? What, what do you mean, what can I say about them? Well, I mean, instance, it's, it's, what, all I can, can they download a particular script that you would recommend? Let's uh, I have, um, if I, you know, e email me or I, I will give everybody here access to, uh, uh, to essentially the script that we just, the scripts that we just went over, which was essentially kind of take how to handle an inbound phone call. So I could provide that for you. And it's, um, you know, and I say script and even, and a lot of people, oh, I don't like scripts, but it's, you know, it's it's again, it's about understanding. It's it's if you take if you treat it like a script and and it's like okay, I'm I'm gonna just read off this script here. Then again, you 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 might sound robotic. So it's important to understand to believe in this to believe in what you're reading. Um, this isn't this isn't a script by the way. I just piece of paper over here. Uh, to believe in to believe in what you're reading and you know to um to be able to you know, utilize your tone inflection and everything with, uh, with what you're reading. So I'll provide everybody here with, uh, on today's webinar with um, PDF documents of uh, free scripts. That's not a problem. Sweet, sweet. Um, speaking of tone, uh, Jane wrote in, how do we keep from sounding like robots on the phone when we do follow a script? Is that just so, with practice? It is with practice, and I, I compare it, you know, a lot of a lot of you guys on the webinar know that I did a lot with video, and it's like kind of that same question, how do I get comfortable on the damn camera, because it's like you see yourself, and you kind of get like camera, sh camera shy when you're using video. So, you know, when it comes to the phone, it just takes practicing, you know, and, um, and reevaluating the things that you're doing correct and incorrect, and a lot of times if it helps you, you know, put a mirror by your by your phone so that you can actually like see yourself when you're talking on the phone so that because when you see yourself you know you if you're if you're just like if you're like this you know or like this versus when you see yourself you're like okay this is what I look like and this is probably how I sound like too so um, you know put them use a mirror or and it, it really is just a matter of of uh, of pra you know practice and repetition and making sure that you're holding your your team or yourself accountable. I agree. All right. Thank you, Jane. Great if you question. Want it bad enough, if you want it bad enough, if you want anything bad enough, there's, 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 you know, there's nothing that can stop you, essentially. And so if you want to improve your phone skills, if you see the value and you say, hey, you know, this is, this is actually this, yeah, I'm not very good on the phone. In fact, I actually suck on the phone and I, and I want to improve my phone skills, then you can, you know, there's two choices, basically. You can continue to make excuses on why you don't want to do it or why it wouldn't work, or you could just simply do it, you know, and see the results from it and, and make more money, you know, be, su be successful on the phone. <laughs> make more money. All right. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron wrote in, and this really doesn't have anything to do with this webinar, but I love that he's asking you. He says, do you think leaving a voicemail is valuable or it is not valuable? Uh, initially, yes. So that is in another webinar that I did early, uh, with, with you, Eliana, <coughs> kind of talking about uh, outbound call or like a, a internet process essentially right, right. Um, making outbound calls so um, but yes but just to touch base on the voicemail the voicemail you need to again using this that you need to be energetic be positive you need to give the customer a reason to call you back and then close off with an expectation of 
of um, that if they don't call you back, you're going to call them back. So it's going to sound something like this. It's going to say, hey, Jason, good morning. My name's Elise over here at ABC Motors. I wanted to thank you for your online request, or I wanted to you know, connect with you in regards to the new Chevy Tahoe. I had a couple quick questions for you. I also have some great news. Uh, please return my call. My number is, I'm going to state my number. It's right about 10 o'clock here Thursday morning. I will be here until about uh, 7 o'clock tonight. And I'll be sure to follow up with you a little bit later today as well to make sure we connect. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much again. And then there's another link maybe that you could provide them, Eliana, to kind of go through that, that step of how to actually get the customer on the phone. But as far as voicemail, initially, I'll, I'll usually leave a voicemail in the morning and then a voicemail in the afternoon, or a voicemail in the evening, like, and then a couple calls in between there as well. Yes. Um, to check out that webinar, go to dealeron.com slash webinar and click on the link on the right-hand side for on-demand webinars and check out our previous webinars with the YouTube diva, Elise Kephart. The one that she is referring to, I believe, is our record-breaking webinar that we did together, right? Which was right. learn Elise Kephart's entire sales process. Boom. Right. You're going to need to watch that a few times. Take, take good notes, all right? All right, next one. Justin wrote in follow-up calls. What is the best greeting to lead into setting the appointment? Uh, sorry, I just got an important uh, text from my nanny. Um, the best <laughs> greeting to, to what was it now? To lead into setting the appointment. To lead into setting the appointment. For a voicemail? It said for follow-up calls. Okay. So... Again, for follow-up calls, um, when you're actually live on the phone? It just says follow-up calls. What is the best greeting to lead into setting the appointment? The best greeting. Um, okay, so you're talking about making – I'm confused by the question. I'm sorry. I don't know if we're live on the phone or if we're – because if you, if you leave on the voicemail, hey, I want to set up a time that you can come on down, it's like you've already given your cards away. You know, they're, you're calling, like, you don't want to say that on a voice, if that's the question. You don't want to say, I want to see if you can come on down for an appointment or come on down for a test driver, because now it's like when they listen to that voicemail, they already know what you want. You want to go for the appointment when you have them live on the phone, because you're probably going to get an objection, and you want to be able to overcome that objection when you're live with the customer on the phone, when it comes to, like, when it comes to an outbound call. Justin, thank you question. so much. Uh, Justin did have... A follow-up. He says, how do you handle the objection of, I don't want to give my contact because I do not want all of your follow-up? <laughs> do people say that? <laughs> well, um, if you do it in the right way, again, if you do it in the right way, and I, so I see this a lot, you know, people are like, I can't, if, if you do it in the right way, you're not going to run into that issue um, very often. Um, if you do happen to get somebody that, you know, won't share their contact information, you know, you could say, it's, an, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, there's a lot of rotten apples in our industry, and, you know, I'm not one of them. And is it a fair statement to say that you're going to be making a buying decision, you know, not necessarily today or next week, but in the future? All right, great. Well, at some point, you're going to have to trust uh, trust somebody. Why couldn't it be me? Why couldn't it be now? That being said, you know, are you calling from your home or cell phone? It's, it, I will tell you, I, um, even when I take phone ups now at dealerships, I never run into that issue. So if you're running into that issue, it could be a way of how you're asking. You know, so look at how you sound and then think about how you're asking for that customer's contact information. You know, if you're saying, can I get your name, can I get your phone number, that's not the, that's, it's again, it's about how, you know, how you word things when you ask. Gotcha. To get the, the answer that you want. No, that makes sense. All right, Justin, good luck. Uh, Jason wrote in, he says, oh, yeah. whoa, I don't know what that is. All right, Jason wrote in, he says, what do you suggest to get a higher show rate? Um, higher show rates are going to be um, management confirmation, <coughs> um, utilizing video, you know, in uh, uh, confirming a confirmation of um, appointments. And, um, you know, when you're at the end of the phone call, again, can, you know, saying, I'm going to write that down in my appointment book. You know, if you're going to be running a little early or a little late, go ahead and let me know. Um, and then making sure that you have a confirmation process put into place, too. I love that. And then Mark, he's following up on that question, too. He's like, so how do you handle missed appointments? So let's say you do all that or most of that, mm -hmm. and the people still don't show up. Mm, do we track them down? 
<clears throat> so I'm going to get them back on the phone, and you're probably going to get their voicemail. And when you get their voicemail, then I'm going to say, hey, Jason, it's Elise over here at ABC Motors. Hey, I wanted to uh, connect with you in regards to um, our um, the visit that we had scheduled for today. Uh, ring me back when you have a quick moment. My number is da 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 uh, it's right about 10 o'clock here Tuesday. I'll be here till 7 o'clock tonight, and I'll follow up with you here later, later today if I don't hear back. Get them live on the phone to have this conversation. So once you get that customer live on the phone, uh, then you're going to say, hey, Jason, I hope I'm not calling it a bad uh, Hi, is this Jason? Hi, Jason, I hope I'm not calling it a bad time. Um, hey, this is Elise over here at ABC Motors. The reason for my call is I wanted to apologize. We actually got really busy here uh, earlier today, and I just wanted to make sure that you were taken care of <clears throat> on your when you were here. So what I'm doing there is I'm not putting I'm putting the blame on myself because the expectation there is they're going to say oh you know what <coughs> I actually wasn't able to make it in I apologize I had uh, the kids soccer practice or whatever it is and it's hey not a problem at all let's go ahead and re uh, reschedule time that works best for you are you thinking this afternoon or this evening would work would work best so I'm never going to like make the customer feel like you missed your appointment I'm going to put the I'm going to put the blame on myself tricky. I'm going to have to try and use that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next question. Uh, thank you for the great question, Mark. Um, Amanda W. wrote in and she says, we definitely need to do our training more often. We try to do it monthly and we use a few different call guides. So, Elise. Yes. Somebody who's over at Phone Ninjas, what do you feel is the proper amount of training to do for phone just for phone. Uh, How, much be, How much? It train? should be at least. It should be at least on a weekly basis, at minimum. At okay. minimum. Yeah. No. All right. Great. Um, Scott wrote in. He says, "I have 40 years in the business. I'm the trainer for a group of seven stores, and if you teach in a way that, uh, and if you teach in this way, not that." not what you did wrong, but here's what you can do right, people respond to the coaching and not the punishing. Thank you right. for that comment, Scott. Yeah. I, I agree yeah. with that. All right. Okay. Um, Aaron wrote in, when calling customers, which is better way to greet them? Hi, is this the customer's name? Or, hi, this is salesperson's name from such and such dealership. I'm going to confirm that I'm talking to who I want to be talking to first. Um, so I'm going to say, hi, is, is Jason there? Or, hi, is Eliana there? And then you're going to say, oh, this is her. And then I'm going to ask if it's a good time. But I'm going to word it to where I want the, I know the customer is most likely, I want the customer to tell me the word back, no. So if I say, do you have a quick moment to talk? Then they're going to say, no, i got to go. Versus, hope I'm not calling at a bad time, or I hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. No, who is this? And then I'm going to say, oh, this is Elise over here at ABC Motors. And the reason for my call is, so I'm going to confirm, I'm going to ask, I'm going to, you know, because just because I'm calling a Jason, if a male picks up, that might not be Jason. It could be Jason's brother or uncle or, you know, another male that picked up. So I want to um, confirm that I'm ta speaking to who whom I want to be speaking with. Gotcha, gotcha. Aaron, I hope that helps you out. Last question before we let you go, Elise. You've been so patient today. We had a lot of, a lot of great comments from our awesome audience today. Last question comes in from Bobby. She says, how can you... Hire Elise to get a copy of those scripts. Wink, wink. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. Nice. But hey, you know what? Speaking of, I totally forgot. You have your big announcement to make. I do, and I was I was waiting for the very end because I, I hope hopefully people haven't dropped off. No, uh, we have like, a, we have a lot of people on this call right now. Right. Yeah, you have. Uh, what is this big announcement that you have? Um, man, I'm I'm even nervous. I gotta pull I gotta pull up my notes here. Uh, you have notes? <laughs> I got notes here. So we, uh, so this webinar, first off, thank you everybody for attending this mm -hmm. webinar. I hope you guys got a lot out of it as far as just um, some core essentials and the core importance of, of how to handle your phone calls. Uh, as many of you know, the, you know, the last year and a half, I have been uh, the VP of sales with Phone Ninjas. And my big announcement is uh, respectfully, as of, uh, as of this month, as of November, I have, I have respectfully resigned, and um, I am going completely on my own solo venture. So ultimately, um, with my solo venture, you know, my main goal is going to be helping uh, dealers, salespeople, internet departments like yourself on this webinar to strengthen their process, strengthen, strengthen their sales teams, 
um, lead to strengthen their uh, lead handle <coughs> lead handling um, processes that not only I've used uh, when I've when I sold cars, but uh, that I've trained uh, dealerships throughout the country on as well. And so I'm, uh, you know, reflecting back, I'm really excited. I, I feel as though looking back, um, it, you know, I have a very entrepreneurial spirit, and it's spirit, and it's something that I, I think looking back, it's something that I, uh, I've wanted to do for a while. Um, I just had the typical, you know, that fear factor of, of, of doing it. And so uh, that's my big announcement. So I, um, you know, respectfully have resigned from Phone Ninjas, and I'm going to be um, uh, the uh, the least kept art experience from from here on out. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Just so you know, people are rolling in with their comments. So proud of you, Elise. You're changing an industry. We love you, Elise. Thanks. Way to go. Congrats. Go, Elise. That's awesome. <laughs> and from me and everyone else out there, all the people that you have trained and all of the people who have yet to be trained by somebody as fabulous as you, I'm going to just <laughs> let you know, we are pulling for you. Good Thank luck. You. Best wishes. Continued success, my friend, yeah. and uh, entrepreneurialism couldn't have happened to a better gal. So go <laughs> kill him you. out there, Tiger. Yeah. So <laughs> I um. So for now, I've started a um. Uh, there's a there's a Facebook. Uh, I have my own personal Facebook, which a lot of us might be affiliated on. But if you go to facebook.com forward slash the E K X, so that's the E E K X. That sounds for Elise Capard Experience. Um, go ahead and subscribe to that page. That's gonna, it's not gonna be as many. It's not, there's not gonna be Lily posts so much. It's really gonna be focused on um, <clears throat> on um, helping dealers uh, again with their with their processes in their stores, and um, and ultimately what I'm gonna be doing. And then uh, mid mid month December, I'm gonna be uh, launching a uh, a pretty big website. So that is in the works as well. But for well, now, just uh, look up facebook.com forward slash the ekx. Well, I hope you'll still come back and do some more webinars with me. <laughs> yeah, no, of course, of course. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. Because we can't do this stuff without you, Elise. There's no one like you in the industry, and so very pleased and honored to have you on my show every single time. Thank you so much. Just phenomenal, phenomenal webinar today. Thank you so much for everything that you, you do. Congratulations, of course. Thank and you. best wishes, my friend. Thank you. Thank right. you. We'll I'm see. Excited. We'll see you around. I'm sure. Uh, hey. All right. Are you going to be at any of the upcoming conferences that I should know about? I am going to be uh, doing. Uh, I'm going to be doing. I'm uh, putting in an application that's a little bit later, but I'm putting in an application for Digital Dealer coming up. And I've spoken at Digital Dealer before, so I'm putting in an application for Digital Dealer. And then uh, the NADA cutoff for speakers is cut off, but I will be attending NADA this year as well. Wonderful. All right. Well, you know what? We hope to see you there. Thank you so much, Thank Elise. You. I know you have to run off and go to a dealership, but I just yes. wanted to let you know. Yeah. You did amazing. <laughs> of course, audience, i got to remind you that a link to download a copy of this webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today. You can also please share it with your friends and colleagues. And also, you can find it on dealeron.com slash webinars, where you can view mm -hmm. any of our upcoming webinars and access any of our past webinars, too. And this webinar is going to conclude in just a moment. And you're going to get a short survey. And when you do, dudes, fill it out, please. We got to know what you thought about today's presentation. We are always looking for your feedback. <laughs> so please fill out. It's a short survey. It's only six questions. And I want to know what you thought of Elise's perfect phone up presentation all right today we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all those completed surveys to also win some google prizes and at least if you wouldn't mind going to that last slide yeah uh, so i can tell go. the audience that invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next webinar how to optimize your marketing with google analytics now, by now, most dealerships are already using Google Analytics to monitor their website's performance and see which parts of their websites are performing well. However, many don't know that Google Analytics and digital attribution can point you to your optimal digital marketing mix if, if you know how to set it up correctly and if you know how to interpret the reporting. So, are you using Google Analytics to vastly improve your marketing and ultimately sell a lot more cars? 
Well, in this eye-opening one-hour webinar, one of our industry's best and brightest, Kevin Fry, he's going to show you how to optimize your marketing and Google Analytics. In this advanced session, you're going to learn step-by-step -step instructions and ground-breaking strategies combined with real-life data and examples, all of which is going to help you find your optimal marketing mix. Kevin will challenge some industry norms which will change your perception of where to best invest your marketing money. Furthermore, he's going to share upcoming changes in the automotive industry that will turn every dealer's current marketing spend strategies upside down. You think you can handle the truth? This incredible presentation promises to leave you with invaluable Google Analytics insights that you can use to make tremendous marketing improvements at your dealership right away. So if you want to learn how to optimize your marketing with Google Analytics, then this is the webinar you can't afford to miss. Now, don't forget, Dealer On's weekly webinars are held Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, feel free to contact me directly. Again, my name is Eliana Raggio. I love hearing from you, so track me down online. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. I'm on all the automotive social networks. Or just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And I hope to see you all on another webinar in Dealeron's continuing education series. Take care.